The Couple Next Door. Written by Peg Lynch and starring Peg Lynch and Alan Bunce. It's national send your team to the Jello Bowl week. Tell everybody you know, and don't, don't, don't let the week go by without J-E-L-L-O. This is Don Wilson for Jello again. You know, sports lovers everywhere are Jello fans these days. That's because Jello gives you real get out and win energy and a little extra kick that comes from the sheer delight of eating Jello. Send your team to the Jell-O Bowl this week. J-E-L-L-O. Betsy, honey, now stop playing with your oatmeal and just eat it. I am eating it, but I like to stir it around and make designs first. Well, it's not polite. On top of that, you'll miss your school bus. You should eat like your brother here. He has an appetite, don't you? <laughs> Mommy? Yes, dear. What do you want for Christmas? Well, let's see. Uh, I know what Mommy wants for Christmas. Got a list right here. Waste basket for the living room, garbage can. A garbage can for Christmas? Well, it's a fancy kind with a foot pedal so Mommy doesn't have to stoop over. Then she wants some more wooden hangers for the front closet. Also some... Oh, Mommy, didn't you ask for anything nice? Now, look, dear, I don't think you should confuse the child. Look, it's what you asked for, isn't it? You sat me down two weeks ago and you said, now we have got to be practical this year. Well, yes, I, I know, dear, well, but... Oh, what's the matter? Didn't you mean it? Well, yes, I, I meant we shouldn't be extravagant this year with a new house here and the new baby. I mean, we are sort of strapped. What's strapped? Strapped hard up, flat broke, no money. Haven't you any money, Daddy? <laughs> Boy, I'll say I haven't. Gosh, what a year. You see, Mommy felt that this year when we're pinching pennies, we really have to be practical. So she asked for things for the house that we need anyhow, things that make her housework easier, too. You know, like another clothes basket. That's what Mommy has insisted on getting. Haven't you, Mommy? Um, well, yes, yes, sure. Now, I remember have... you insisted on Christmas well... morning we're not going to turn around and be disappointed that I didn't get your new wristwatch. Now, are you, for example? Well, no, now, don't be silly, dear. I'd... Oh, look at the time, honestly. Oh, golly, i got to stop and get gas, too. I'm going to be late again. Boy, one of these days I'll lose my job. That's all. Well, goodbye, goodbye, Oh, goodbye. here, get into your coat. Put it on, dear. Yeah, it's cold. Right. Goodbye, Daddy. Goodbye, 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 darling. I'll see you tonight. All right, darling. Oh, honestly. Is Daddy really going to buy you a garbage can for Christmas? Well, yes, I, I guess he is. <laughs> Here comes Santa and his reindeer With a yuletide message for all to hear Make it a white Christmas Give her a major appliance Make it a white Christmas Give her a major appliance what wife wouldn't love a modern home freezer, an up-to-date range? A big new refrigerator, a smart steel cabinet sink, a clothes washer or dryer. An automatic water heater or wonderful dishwasher. These are all gifts that do so much to lighten a wife's work. Give her more time to spend with the rest of the family. So men, take this hint from U.S. Steel. And you ladies, remind him by singing this song. Make it a white Christmas. Give her a major appliance. Well, well, for goodness sakes, I thought I heard someone at the door. May I come in, Mrs. Pemberton? Yes, yes, of course, Betsy. I'm forgetting my man is leaving you standing out there in the cold. I guess I was just surprised at this unexpected visit. Well, won't you sit down? Thank you. Well, I've seen you playing in the schoolyard across the street here so many times, and I've thought, well, wouldn't it be nice if Betsy would stop in and see me? And here you are. Yes. Well, did you have a nice day at school? Yes, thank you. Weren't you supposed to take the school bus home? No, I was going to play with Mary Lou after school. 
but I came over to see you instead. Oh. Oh, well, that's certainly very nice. Would you like a cookie? Well, no, thank you. Well, maybe you'd like one later. Don't you think you'd better unbutton your coat if you're going to stay a while? Yes, I guess so. Well, how's your mummy? Oh, well, she's pretty good, I guess. Pretty good? Is she sick? No, she's tired all the time. Oh, aren't we all? How's Daddy? He's flat broke. Oh, Betsy. Oh, Betsy, you are a scream. He is. He said he was hard up, and he said he didn't have any money. Well, I guess that's true of all of us, honey. And he's going to lose his job. Lose his job? Yes, that's what he said this morning. Oh, now, Betsy, are you sure? Yes, he said so. What? Well, well, that's terrible. That's simply terrible. And right before Christmas. Are you sure you're right, Betsy? Yes. They were talking about it at breakfast. They don't hardly have any money to spend for Christmas. Well, now, my goodness, you don't have to worry your pretty little head about it. I'm sure your mommy and daddy will make out just fine. And when Christmas comes... Daddy's giving mommy a garbage can. A what, dear? A garbage can and some new wooden hangers for the front closet. Oh, now, Betsy, I'm sure you got something all mixed up. You misunderstood Mommy and Daddy. No, I didn't. Well, let's go out in the kitchen and make some hot chocolate, shall we? Won't that be fun? No, thank you. I wanted to ask you something. Oh, well, yeah, sure, sure. You just, you just ask me anything, Betsy. Do you have anything I can do for you so I can earn some money? Earn some money? Yes. You paid Mary Lou and Jimmy Kendall a quarter to help you weed the garden. I thought maybe I could, too. Oh! Oh, yes. Well, now, uh, now... See, my garden doesn't need any weeding in the wintertime, you know. I want to buy Mommy something nice for Christmas. Oh, yes, yes, of course you do. I don't want to buy just an old wooden hanger. No, no, of course you don't. Well, now, let's see. I must have something you can do for me to earn some money. I can do dusting. Mommy said I'm a good duster. Well, I'll bet you are. I do the rungs of the chair and everything. And I even do the curlicues. You do? Well, that's certainly more than my regular cleaning girl does. She never does the curlicues. <laughs> <laughs> well, now... And I um, can sweep off the porches, too. And do my porches need sweeping? And I can set the table, too. Well, that's marvelous. Just simply marvelous. <laughs> I've been looking for someone who could help me with all these things. And I tell you, Betsy, it's so hard to get anyone these days. It's lucky I stopped in and asked you. Well, I should say so. Now, I'll tell you what we'll do. You dust the downstairs here, sweep both my porches, and set the table for dinner. That ought to take about an hour. And I'll pay you a dollar. How's that? Oh. Uh, it, well, isn't, isn't that enough? I'd rather have 50 cents. Well, a dollar's more. I know, but it's too hard to get into my piggy bank. Oh, I see. Well, well, we'll work something out. And I'm afraid you'll have to ride me home. Oh, oh, I expected that. Transportation is one thing they all require. What? Oh, nothing, nothing. Now, come on, I'll find your dust cloth. <laughs> Oh, boy, that snow's really coming down. Getting to look like Christmas out. <laughs> God, I'm sorry I had to work so late, darling. Oh, that's all right. I kept your dinner warm. Ah. Before you eat, I want you to go upstairs and talk to Betsy. Oh? Why? What's the matter? It seems that she told Myra Pemberton you were losing your job and that we were terribly hard up. Oh, no. I don't think it's so <laughs> funny how many other people has Betsy told. Where'd she get the idea I was losing my job? I don't know. Well, you're always saying it. Well, for Pete's sakes, I'm just talking. Well, you had better stop just talking. <laughs> I don't know when I have been so embarrassed. Oh, honey. For some reason, Myra brought Betsy home, and she came in. I was so surprised. I said, why, hello, Myra. And she said... Hello, dear. <laughs> and she kissed me, which isn't at all like Myra, you know. Yeah, no. And she patted my arm and kept squeezing it and made some remark about keeping my chin up. <laughs> well, I asked her to sit down and have a cup of coffee, and she kept saying things like, it's always darkest before the dawn, and there's always a silver lining, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't know what she was talking about. And she finally told me that Betsy had told her how destitute we are right now, that you were losing your job at... Well, I nearly fell off the chair. Well, let's face it, we are hard up. Oh, now, stop it. I know this is a tough year, but you do have a good job, and you're in line for a promotion. We have got to stop talking money in front of Betsy all the time, especially when you joke about things and she believes you. Why, why, she'll get the worst feeling of insecurity. I'm worried about her. It may warp her whole life. Really, going around telling people well, that we're maybe broke. maybe if Betsy tells enough people we're broke, we'll get some donations. No. 
<laughs> Myra offered to tide us over. Myra wouldn't believe me. She had tears in her eyes. She thought I was being brave and just carrying on with my head held high or something. Now, you go upstairs and talk to Betsy, and you set that child straight. Yeah. Yeah, I guess maybe I'd better. <laughs> Get a white Christmas. Give her a major appliance. To help you make it a white Christmas, your Kelvinator dealer has a wonderful selection of gleaming new Kelvinator home appliances, all ready and waiting at special, easy-to-own prices. His Christmas values include the brilliant new 1959 Kelvinator automatic washer that washes all clothes cleaner, easier, safer. Beautiful matching Kelvinator electric dryer, of course, and the only range that ends oven cleaning, the marvelous new Kelvinator electric range with throwaway aluminum foil oven linings. Also, the world's finest food keeper, fabulous Foodorama, only refrigerator and upright freezer combination made. Be sure to see all the fine Christmas values at your Kelvinator dealers now. Make it a white Christmas. Give her a major appliance. And make it a Kelvinator. <laughs> You, you did what? I dusted the downstairs, and I swept the porches, and I set the table. Mrs. Pemberton gave me a dollar. Oh, I see. Now, look, Betsy, darling, I don't want you to worry about money. And I don't want you to worry about money either, Daddy. You know what? Well, no, what? It's a secret. Don't tell Mommy. No, 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 I won't. We're going to get Mommy a new wristwatch for Christmas. Oh, Daddy, you don't want to give her a garbage can. D darling, Betsy, honey, now listen, every year, every year your mother insists on being practical. Now, we go through this every year, and believe me, if, if I ever did give your mommy a garbage can... Well, you're not going to give her one, because she thinks you are. We're going to give her a wristwatch, and I've already bought it. Uh, you've already bought it? A wristwatch? Oh, it's just wonderful, Daddy. Mrs. Pemberton took me to this big store, and I only had to pay a dollar down and a dollar every week, and I'll earn the money at Mrs. Pemberton. She said so. Well, isn't that wonderful? Well, yes, yes, of course. And, Daddy, Mrs. Pemberton said if I knew anybody who was big enough to shovel snow, she'd hire him, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I see what you mean. Well, if Mrs. Pemberton needs her snow shovel, well, we ought to... Know somebody who's big enough to shovel snow, huh? <laughs> <laughs> We've got to hurry, Daddy, and work hard because there's not much time left before Christmas. If we want to get the watch for Mommy... We... Listen, we'll lay our plans tomorrow. We'll team together and put our shoulders to the wheel, you and Daddy, huh? Now, don't you worry. Somehow, we'll get that watch for Mommy. Don't you worry either. <laughs> no, darling, I won't. Good night, Daddy. Good night, sweetheart. Sleep tight. Have a talk with Betsy and get her straightened out? Well, no. She had a talk with me and got me straightened out. <laughs> now, look, stop worrying about Betsy, will you? She has no feeling of insecurity that's going to warp her whole life, as you put it. Boy, I tell you, you worry about your kids, but in the long run, they turn out just fine. Just fine. Now, look, what, what, I, 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 no, you no, no, look, I mean, honey, what, just what, what, don't ask questions before Christmas, huh? <laughs> The Couple Next Door is written by Peg Lynch and stars Peg Lynch and Alan Bunce with Seal McLaughlin, Madeline Pierce, and Francie Myers and is produced by Walter Hart. This is Stuart Metz inviting you to listen again Monday for The Couple Next Door.